Hi everyone. Okay, so to start this painting, we are going to begin by mixing the colour for the background of our squirrel. Um, so I'm going to slide across my palette for you. There, you can see that nice and clearly. Um, we're using ultramarine blue for the background. And you can see I've got my wet brush in the palette there. Give it a mix up into the paint, uh, into the water. Uh, we want this quite strong um, and we're going to use some salt in the background. Um, I've got a little tester piece of paper. What did I do with that? Um, I'll grab that in a second and show you. Um, okay, so I'm not sure where I've put that. Let me just pause you for a second. Okay, so um, that last test trip went completely missing, so I've got another piece here to show you. Um, right, so I have a nice blue colour here. It's quite watery, which is what you want because we're going to cover the entire painting quite quickly to begin with. Um, so we need to make sure you've got plenty of colour mixed in your palette to cover that background so i'm going to move my palette across now bring over my painting for you to see just make sure it's lined up on the camera for you there we go so you can see here's my squirrel and i'm going to be painting the background i'm also going to paint over the um the branch here as well to make things a little bit easier now we're going to do this in stages so I'm going to take out my large flat brush to first of all wet an area before I start painting. So I'm just clean water on a big flat brush and I'm going to start off in this top corner and just be careful not to go too far into your squirrel if you can help it just paint water, apply the water in the background and not on the squirrel but be reasonably quick about it because it will start to dry. If you're in a, a room with central heating like I am now, it will dry quite quickly. Now I'm going to get my blue, which is already on this brush, and I'm going to apply it in that water, being careful at the top here not to go to the edge of where I put the water. I'm going to, um, hopefully that'll leave a soft line for me, um, which means when I come back around this side, I won't get a hard edge. So I've, I've actually painted water up to about this section, but I've stopped painting here. So you can see I've got this softened edge. Now I'm bringing this blue down. Okay. And at this stage, I'm going to pick up a little bit of salt and I'm going to sprinkle it on the surface of that blue that I've just applied. Okay, um, so now I'm going to take my, I'm going to move it across a bit so you can see where I am there. Um, so now I'm going to come down the side of the squirrel with just the water first of all, so we control where the paint goes and it, give, it allows us a little bit of extra time if this paper is wet, gives us a bit of extra time to apply the paint without getting those hard lines. Um, so I'm coming round the back side of the squirrel there. And I'm going to wet the bottom section and covering, you can see I'm covering the branch as well. So I'm going to come across Actually, I should be able to come all the way to the other corner and now back into the blue, bringing that down and moving that paint around. It doesn't have to be a flat wash, you can have some darker areas, some lighter areas, it just gives it a little bit of interest. Um, I'm going to let that dry a little bit actually because it's very wet so before I put the salt on this time I'm going to allow that a little time to dry off a touch 
before I put the salt down and um, just pop some more water down now I'm going to start to come up the other side let's move you across again so you can see I'm coming up across around the other side of the squirrel with my blue paint just taking a bit of care around the edges there but not too much care as you can see across the branch there because it's wet the, the paint will spread um, it'll go where it wants to go now then let me just check how wet this left hand side is that's good so it's just had a little if I move you across again just had a little time to dry off a touch so I'm going to go back into my salt and sprinkle some salt down only in the sky I'm not sprinkling the salt um, I'm not sprinkling it on that uh, branch there so just in the sky and a little bit here as well by his tummy move you back across again exactly the same as before just pre-wet that area we're in the sort of the last quarter now just carefully around his ears and his tail and because I left that top section wet and didn't paint right up to the edge of the water you can see I've got a nice soft edge there so when I come against it with my next with the last bit of paint I shouldn't get any hard definite line there so um, I'll place in some blue but we won't get like um, an actual line it's sort of a softened effect so I'm going around drawing a few tufty bits on his tail so I'm going working around that just bringing that paint into the water and painting the sky in the rest of the sky I've mixed just enough paint so that's good Um, just going to go into my palette pick up some strong blue just to pop down here and there I want a little bit of a stronger blue just in this top section here and that'll just blend with the water nicely and just give it a couple of minutes because that's very very wet before I apply the salt um, so you can tip your board and you can see how wet and dry uh, the surface is I'm going to try and apply a bit more salt in this top section because it's dried off a little bit more and it's not done an awful lot so it must have been a little bit too wet when I put the salt down first of all so now it's dried off I'm just popping down a little bit more salt because um, the thing is, if it's too wet, uh, the salt doesn't work in the same way. And I'm looking from at different angles and I can see what's soaking wet and what's drying off. And actually, if you let it dry off a little bit, you get a better effect. So I'm going to give this top right hand corner two, three minutes to dry off, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how cold the room is. And I'm going to pop some more salt down and come back once this is dry. Okay, so while that's drying, I thought I'd show you how to mix um, a couple of the colours for the squirrel. So um, if I bring in the reference image here, we've got two very distinctive tones. We've got this very dark brown that goes all the way down his back and on his ears. And then we've got this orangey ginger tone that's running across his body as well. So I'm going to show you how to mix those now. Um, we'll begin um, at the top here with the cadmium yellow once we've got um, a reasonably strong yellow 
So I just pop that on the tester strip there. You can see that that's quite a strong yellow. Um, so once we've got that, just wipe off the excess paint, clean your brush, and then we're gonna add cadmium red into that yellow to make an orange. Okay. Thoroughly mix your paints on the palette. Don't let, don't sort of just be mixing over the side here and the rest of this still be yellow. You want to mix everything in together. And I'm going to test that. It's a little bit pale, so I'm going to go back into my red, pick up some more paint. Mix that in. And actually, I'm going to add some more yellow as well. So I'm going to put back into my um, yellow. So I want to clean your brush first so that you don't contaminate your yellow paint. Just pick up some more pigment and we'll get a slightly thicker consistency and a stronger colour. And hopefully now I'm going to have a touch more of the red as well. mix that in so just keep going gradually bit by bit and you'll get there and you want a slightly stronger orange color it's just a little bit thicker a little bit stronger than the first orange that i mixed now down the bottom here in this part of the palette we want to mix a dark brown so rather than going to the burnt sienna that i have in my palette i want to show you how to mix the brown um, and actually we start off in exactly the same way. We start off with an orange. So because um, I have red on my brush already, let's start with the red. Now it's a dark brown we want, so we want a lot of red and we want a lot of blue when we get to it and only a little bit of the yellow because we want a dark colour. If I wanted a lighter brown, I'd be using more yellow in the mix. So red in the palette some yellow to turn it orange you can see i don't know if you can see on camera but this is much redder than the first orange i mixed and once you're happy with that again just wipe off your brush don't don't go putting your brush straight into the water. You've already got, you know, you've mixed a lovely colour there. Half of it's on your brush. If you go and pop that in the water, you've lost it. So take the excess off your brush, then into the water, clean your brush off. And this is where you want to start adding the ultramarine blue. And you can see there that it changes it straight away because the blue obviously is the stronger colour of the three colours. Um, but there you can see it's very pale if I just test that out that's quite a light brown we want a much stronger brown so wiping off that excess back into the water clean brush and we're going to do exactly the same thing again start with the red pick up a good amount of pigment on your brush so colour mixing does take time you know, you've got to put in the effort there to get the right colour when you're working with your primaries. Um, but it is worth it. Take your time to get what you want. Um, so that's given us a very warm brown. Now, I am going to go back into the yellow because I want to pick up, I just want to strengthen this colour. So need a little bit of yellow otherwise our brown will be too purple so that yellow counteracts the purple it's opposite purple on the colour wheel um, and that's how it works so taking that excess off my brush cleaning it off take the excess water off your brush as well once you've cleaned it because you don't want to dilute this anymore we want to make a stronger colour and back into my blue pick up a good amount of blue and then we want to be mixing that thoroughly all around the palette in that little section there okay so now you can see we have a stronger 
brown now let's test it because to me in the palette that looks quite grey so it might need warming up a little bit um, so always test it out if I hold that up to the light you can see it's a, sort of a dark brown but actually it's a bit too cold uh, it's a little bit on the grey side a neutral tone so easily rectified rinse off the brush again and we'll just bring some more red in to warm it back up. Picking up that red, mixing it in. Okay, so you can see it does take a little bit of time. Um, if you didn't want to mix your own brown, feel free to use that, uh, either your burnt sienna or burnt umber, something like that. Okay, so that's much better. If I put that next to the orange that I'm going to be using, you can see that the two colours work quite nicely. And if I bring back the reference image, the two colours are very similar to what we have on the reference there. So that's how you want to mix your colours for the next stage. But you want to make sure your background is thoroughly dry first and we'll come back in a second. Okay, so the next step is to work, obviously, on the squirrel. Um, but I've just pulled out my putty rubber because um, if you look at the reference image, um, I've drawn the squirrel, well, traced the squirrel through, and you can see that there's very light areas on his belly there. Um, and also some beautiful light highlights around his face. And I don't want to have such dark pencil marks showing in those areas, so I'm going to rub this is probably moving the camera so i apologize for that um but i'm just rubbing those areas away to lighten those lines i can still see them to paint from um but hopefully you won't see them once um the painting's complete um just having a look there i've already rubbed out the nose area that i wanted to which is fine. Um, also, if you come into your squirrel with some of the black background blue sky colour, just take a flat brush, a damp flat, flat brush, and just rub away at that blue and it'll lift right off. Um, so you can do that as well. Um, and before you start, just make sure there's no salt crystal granules on your squirrel because you don't want this kind of crystalline effect happening on him. We want this to look like hair and fur and whatever. So yeah, just if there's any salt on there, just wipe it away. Um, my background is still drying. It's it's I mean, it's almost dry, but it's not quite fully dry. So I haven't rubbed the salt away from the background as, as yet. I'm just going to go ahead, speed this up and, and start painting. Um, so let's have a look then. Um, what I'm going to do first of all, so you can see there's clearly there's a lot of orange on him, ginger undertone. So what is the best way to tackle this? I would say it's to use the orange mix that we use, that we've created and actually do a wash across the entire squirrel first of all just not painting the very light areas that we we want to um, remain white so I'm going to do that I'm going to take my number 10 round brush if you're not confident with with that um, you can have you can you know you can use a smaller brush you could use a flat brush it's entirely up to you whatever you're more comfortable with so i'm just going to make sure it's clean i've still got some dark brown paint on mine cleaning it off now okay so remember we mixed up the two colors in the palette we've got the orange and we've got the brown um so i'm just going to um get my flat brush again Let's make this easy for us beginners. Um, wet that, apply a little bit of water to the tail to begin with. I think I've centralised you in the camera, haven't I? Yes, that's fine. So, um, yeah, I'm just painting on some water on the tail to begin with. Um, going into the orange now and I'm going to paint the orange on 
Just using the tip of my brush at the edge to kind of create a bit of a featheriness right on the edges where it meets the blue in the background. Um, just to give it a slight feathery effect, fe feathered effect, <laughs> bit of a tongue twist to that one. Um, yeah, and then just bring that colour all the way down. And obviously we've only wet so far, so we want to go back in bit of water, wetting the rest of the squirrel. The reason I do this is because usually when you're a beginner you're a bit slower with the painting. So just to give you that time and, and prevent you from having to rush and panic, you just pop some water down on the surface and it gives you that breathing space. So just doing the hands there. I'm not going to put the water on the white area. I'm going to try and leave that dry so that the orange doesn't want to run into that. Um, there we go. And then back into my orange and painting the rest of him. So he's got a lighter part of his head, so I'm not going to take the orange up. I'm just going to leave a a light section on the front of his face there. Use your reference image, that really does help. Um, and he has this lovely light section near his belly, so you want to just be a bit careful around there. I've just noticed I've, I've left that very light and it is very light in the reference image, so I shall do the same. I'd have thought it would be blue as the sky in the background, but <laughs> on the reference it's, it's very pale, so I've done that anyway. Um, so again, just sort of you can feather these edges a little bit near his tail. Um, there we go. And this is an undercoat. So, you know, this is the first layer of painting. So um, it doesn't have to be spot on perfect. You just want that coverage. Because what's going to happen is we're going to work in layers over the top, gradually building up to the darks. Um, let's pop a bit of orange on his little hand there, his little paw. Um, we can soften off some of these edges. Obviously that's a crisp, a really, oops, just painted on my background. I didn't want to do that. Just lift that off with some water. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if, if there's some hard lines, we can rectify those. We can use, you know, an, a, a damp brush. Um, and yeah, this is just the base coat. So just get that down and then we'll allow that to dry and then we'll move on to the next section. Right, folks, so um, it's been about two or three minutes and mine's dried off enough for me to continue. So um, I'm going to stick with my larger round brush, number 10, and I'm going to work on the back of the squirrel now. I'm going to separate the tail off from the squirrel's body. We'll paint them in two, um, two sections, and this is going to allow us to, if, if we don't do that, What's going to happen is the browns will merge from the tail to the body and it will flatten his whole shape. We need to uh, distinguish the shape of the body and then the tail as two separate things. So the best way to do that is to paint them um, in that way. So I have the brown on my brush. Um, you might find, because we're using the um, three primaries to make this brown, and we've obviously left it for some time now. It can split in the palette, so just mix the colour again, mix it up in the palette with your brush and it'll all come together. Okay, and we're going to start at the top of his ear and use your reference image. There's a light section at the front of that ear, so I'm just focusing on this back line at the moment and it sort of comes down the light section, oh, sorry, the dark comes down his ear and then down his back um, and it spreads across his, the back of his neck. Okay, don't worry about hard lines right now. 
um, and it sort of comes, it's got a patch coming here. And also it doesn't need to be identical to what you're looking at in the reference, just use it as a guide. Don't panic about these lines drying because we're going to deal with that in a minute. Just get some paint down on the squirrel, just following the back of the squirrel there, um, where he's darkest, following that line that I traced. And uh, this kind of comes in a little bit further. Can you still see on the camera? Yes, that's okay. So I'm just following that shape. And if you think about it, this is the way the hairs are lying on his body as well. So um, I'm just bringing that down. He's a little bit darker, a bit deeper into his body here. Um, okay. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my small brush, just wet, wet the bristles off, um, dipping it into some of the orange paint actually and I'm going to work on this edge I'm going to use the tip of the brush and you can see I'm just flicking that brown out it's only got a little bit of orange on my brush but it's blending with that brown and the brown's still slightly wet and I'm flicking that to um, blend this edge out a little bit so you might want to practice this on a little bit of paper. Um, if I show you really roughly here, so I've got a brown line, which we painted. Then I switch to smaller brush, and I want to just use the tip of this little brush to flick that paint out. You get this sort of feathered edge, okay? So that's what we're doing here. Um, so I'm just using the reference image and he's got some, I'm going to go into the brown now with my small brush. He's got some lovely browns and I'm flicking the brush. I'm just, I'm holding it quite vertical. I'm holding it away from the tip. I'm not holding it here. I'm holding it much further up the um, handle of the brush so that I've got less control and it's easier to create these flicking motions. And I'm just going to follow the direction of the hairs as I can see them in the reference image. And we've actually got a nice orange section here on his leg. So paint some orange in there. And you can see that you sort of build up this hair like texture. It's also got orange, nice oranges down this section here. So. Just use your reference image as a guide. It really will help. But having that orange in the background that's dry just gives you that base coat to work on top of. Um, so let's go back into the brown, bring in some more of this brown here. And I'm just using that flicking motion, okay? Building this up. Now this isn't the final layer either. This is like layer two. Um, I will do another layer once this is dried um, with probably a stronger colour. Um, see how we've really um, diffused that dark at the back there. It's, it's sort of fading into the rest of his hair now, which is what we wanted. And um, then I'm going to come down his face with that brown colour um, around his eye. It's got that lighter patch on his head there. Now we also obviously have that the ear behind, so don't forget that one has got, again, it's got this real dark section and then light along the front tip of it. Okay, um, right, so then we've got his arm and his elbow here, so coming around, changing the direction of my brush strokes a little bit so that it follows the direction of the little hairs. 
um, his hand is much more orange. If you run out of your paint, obviously mix up some more. I'm getting a bit low on my orange now, so I might have to mix some in a moment. Um, he's got quite orange hands actually. So let's do a second coat of orange in there. And also that little nut that he's nibbling on is quite orangey. Um, bringing that orange around, working, working my way across his body, sort of left to right, those little hairs. Try not to make him stripey, try and overlap your strokes a little bit. Let's show you a detailed version of that. Um, so if you go ahead and just make lots of lines that are all the same and they're all next to each other perfectly like that, it's going to look stripy. Um, what you want to try and do is vary your strokes so you want to be um, overlapping them, having slightly different directions and you're building up a much more random pattern. So that's the aim and it's starting to come together a little bit. Um, I'm going to the brown now. Um, I'm working my way around the head. His nose is there somewhere as well. Um, If you happen to lose that light line, don't worry because we can lift that back out again. It's not a problem. Um, his chin, let's make that a little darker. There we go. So he's beginning to come together a little bit now. Um, just blend some of that brown out a bit with my smaller brush with a bit of orange. Just blending that back out. I'm just going to very quickly mix up a little more of my orange I've run out. So start with your yellow, clean your brush into the red. And there we go. It's quite a strong orange that one. I think I've made it a little strong. So just dilute it with some water if it's a bit bright, that's better. Okay, so I've got some more orange now um, and we can build up those marks. Switch, you can, you can have two brushes on the go, I find it easier. I've got two brushes here, one's got my brown on, one's got the orange on and just work in that way building up those marks look at where the darkest darks are and the brightest oranges are and that should help you shape the squirrel okay got these lovely lovely bright oranges okay so i'll build up his body some more but let's work on his tail and i would do exactly the same thing here um um, in the orange, I'm going to go with the orange first, starting, are we in the centre there? Yes. So starting at the tip of his tail, I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm going to flick, flick down into the tail. This is where you can extend some of the hairs a bit beyond um, the background that you painted to get that hair, long hair effect, wild hair effect. So I'm just dragging some of that orange, flicking it down into his tail. Um, again, follow the shape of his tail. See how he's got this lovely curve? So the direction of the hairs change as you come round. Um, that is going to be really helpful for you to describe this shape. Um, if you don't follow the hairs, you're going to flatten it and it's not going to look right. So just be mindful of that as you're going along. If you follow this shape, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, so you can see I'm not taking too much care. I'm just being very flicky with my brush, um, but it's working. It's giving us that 
idea of spiky kind of unruly hairs and so it's very similar to the body of the squirrel but maybe you want to be using slightly longer strokes here because they are much longer hairs um, so you can use longer strokes and I'm just working all the way down at the moment with the orange obviously you can see on the reference image there are darks so I'm going to layer that on top so actually the back here is much lighter there's there's a lot of light shining through um, so I'm just going to water down my orange a little bit just so it's a paler orange colour and just to tone it down at the back because the light's shining through and it's creating that lovely effect. Um, we've, we've also got some light coming through here, which is what we want. Um, let's see. So, okay, so once you've got to that sort of stage, it's a good time now, I think, to switch my brush, go back to my brown. Um, might need to be mixing some more of that as well so I'm going to start this time at his bum and work my way up and um, at the start he sort of the hairs are sort of flicking outwards if you have a rigger brush you could use that um, to create these flicky effects I'm probably getting in the way of the camera while I'm doing this actually so apologies for that um, so yeah, if you want thinner marks, then a rigger brush is a good idea. Um, try and follow the direction of the hairs as before. Build up your marks as you're coming round. Um, some really lovely flicky. If you, if you let go of the control of the brush, you will get much nicer flicks. Much pointier at the end. Um, and honestly it's beneficial it's just it's really thick next to his body so I'm just going to actually paint that in and probably come back with another coat of brown at the end to get that shadow um, around there so you don't want any gaps there but the further out you come you want more gaps in the hairs um, so we've got some flicking right up like that and then we've got some flicking this way as well and then it starts to lighten up a bit further up so I'm only going to go so far with my brown um, I could bring some more brown in a bit further up but with a thinner brush I've, um, to make smaller marks I think so I'm going to give it a rest there I'm going to let this dry and then come back again in a few minutes and build up some more details. Okay, so I've come in again and I've done a second layer on the body of the squirrel, exactly the same as how I did the first layer. So I was just building up those, those layers really, exactly the same effect, the flicky technique. You can see I've darkened up the back again. I've painted in his foot um, with a couple of layers of the brown. I've really darkened up his ears, um, which is helping to give us that shape. Um, so I wanted to show you just the second coat really of the second layer of paint for his tail. Um, so I'm gonna come in with the dark brown and the tip of my smaller brush and I just want to get some flicks of darker brown layered on top of what I did to begin with. Um, actually, let's darken it up a bit more, a bit more blue. So let's thicken the paint now. So I'm just adding a bit more blue and a bit more red just to thicken up what I've got. Um, so it stands proud of those colours that are already on the page. And I'm just going to come in and do some little flicks. Oh, 
holding the brush towards the end of the handle and flicking out okay um, and then coming up to the edge of his back with that dark brown following that line and then flicking out from there so that should just give you that extra depth that we need thickness of hair um, okay I think that's that's fine and um, so the top of his tail is a lot more orange uh, so I'm cleaning my brush off sticking with this um, number four round brush um, but going into the orange let's get a slightly thicker orange mix so remember just to thick to thicken the paint you just add more pigment so there's less water more pigment and you'll get a much more opaque um, consistency of paint and I'm just going to work on the edges a little bit more get some flicks going on to um, give that effect of a rough kind of out of control <laughs> bristly squirrel tail there so we've got some flicks at the edges um, it's really nice and orange let's get some more red it's really nice and orange in this section so I'm gonna red I've added some more red to my mix let's get some nice reds here in this part of the tail just again the flickiness um, oops, my brush has come sometimes your bristles splay um, so just bring them together by twisting them on the palette and that should should bring them together again so less pressure gives you a thinner mark we talked about that last week in class so you don't really want to be putting much pressure on your brush at all I'm going to go back to my slightly thinner orange now and get rid of some of the lightness that I can see in there with a, a more fluid paint and we can just build it up like that so hopefully your painting will be coming along nicely now um, just blending in some of that darker red that I put on his tail I'm gonna have to bring some of this red down here as well now to balance the painting out a bit so a few flicks of that red here and there um, there's some nice orange right down at the bottom so when you work with thicker paint it obviously it's just on the end of your bristles if you like so you kind of have to keep going back to the palette and putting more paint on your brush whereas when your paint's very fluid lots of water your your brush your bristles soak up that paint and you know you can be painting for much longer before having to fill before having to reapply paint on the palette from the palette should I say um, so that is something to look out for don't worry if that happens and um, so yeah so the tails coming together nicely I think that's looking good um, to bring in I can see on the reference image he's got some lovely warm oranges here and here on his body as well so I'm going to bring in some of that thicker paint now to give an overall balance of the tails a lot brighter now than the body so to balance it all out I'm going to bring in some of that warmth um, let's see um, definitely some of it here on his back leg it's much more red gingery here so again just the same that same flicky technique but shorter kind of brush strokes here um, we can bring some down across his foot um, 
and just keep going until you're happy with um, what you have created. It doesn't look, it doesn't need to look exactly like the painting. I keep saying that, you know, we're not trying to create a photograph, photographic type painting. We're creating, or oh, we're emulating what we see in that image um, and creating a lovely painting from it. And also, obviously guys, the most important thing is that you're enjoying yourself while you're doing it. So don't be disheartened if you're not entirely happy with what you've got. Um, see it as a learning curve. Um, it's a very steep learning curve when you're a beginner and you will notice quite quickly that you will pick up these techniques and you'll be able to use what you've learnt in your paintings to create different paintings for yourself. So this is all about learning these different techniques. So today it's a lot of, of colour mixing and also creating these kind of hair textures. And also you've learned that, you know, you can create these beautiful things, textures in the background with, with the salt technique as well. So hopefully you're enjoying it. Now, I'm going to come away from all that hair now and let's let's have a look at um, the eye. Let's get the eye in because as soon as you get that eye going, uh, the, thing, the whole thing will come together. Now, I'm going to be using a bit of Payne's Grey for his eye, but you can use black if you've got it. Um, okay, so I've just applied a little bit of Payne's Grey, make sure that I'm on camera properly. And hopefully you have marked out where the eye is, but also there's a couple of highlights on that eye that you want to preserve. Um, I'll just remind myself where they are. <laughs> and you just want to really carefully paint that shape in. This is something you don't want to rush. Shape of the eye is quite important. So there's two definite highlights on there. So I've just painted one coat of Payne's Grey at the moment. And what I'll do is I'll let that dry and then come back and do a second coat with a bit thicker paint once I'm happy that the shape's right, uh, which it looks to be. I'm going to use some of that Payne's Grey on his little fingers, toes, should I say, <laughs> on his hand there while I've got it on my brush. And also to define his nose a little bit as well. Um, I've managed to keep the light down there where it is on the image. Uh, let's have a look where else. Um, now there are some grey aspects to his body actually. So you could bring in some of this Payne's grey. But I quite like the freshness of the browns and the oranges. So I think I'm going to sort of steer clear of that. Um, there's a bit of darkness on his little nut or whatever it is he's eating. So let's paint that in and also strengthen the... The colour of the nut because it's very pale at the moment. What I might do is it's quite orange, isn't it? So let's get some more orange on there. Um, that's it. Um, and then, um, yeah, so the next thing I want to show you, we'll come back to his eye once it's fully dry, but let's just take a flat brush hopefully you have a flat brush and i'm dipping it in clean water and then i'm taking off the excess water and what we're looking at here are these lovely white hairs coming off here off his belly and his arms it's basically where the light is hitting from the back side of him coming through and it's showing us these lovely furry sections and obviously at the moment we've got this sharp line so to rectify that and to create those hairs you just damp your brush you need a bit of paper towel as well possibly and you're going to just create little work on that edge I'm just scrubbing and dabbing and scrubbing and dabbing. Use a clean part of your paper towel each time you dab out um, but you will find that eventually you 
will have a much more um, hairy, <laughs> hairy section rather than sort of a flat section, which is what you wanted or we wanted. Um, so yeah, just work on that. Just continue to do that. I'll do that off camera and then show you the effects at the end. Um, but hopefully you can see that. Where are we on? Yeah, so there. Can you see? I've just created these highlights. Okay. And if you've lost any of the highlights along his face, you can do the same thing there. So you can run the bristles up and down using the flat side of the flat edge of the brush dab off and you know you've, you've got that highlight back so you can take your time doing that obviously um, now let's just have a look at the branch now we can use good ideas to use the brown you've already got because then you get this nice harmony coming across the painting so I'm going to stick with my flat brush actually and I'm going to start making marks with my flat brush because we've got some lovely bark texture and actually the flat, flat brush is perfect for this um, creating these kind of um, shapes that we can see and um, again vary these shapes you don't want it to look dotty you want them to overlap sometimes and um, we want to vary the shade of the paint so I'm just mixing up a bit more of the brown because I've run out um, just bear with me one moment so I want some more cab so we're using cadmium red and ultramarine blue remember to mix our brown and with a tiny bit of the cadmium yellow as well. Um, we've got a nice dark edge to the top. So, can you see that? Yes. Um, I'll just paint that in using the flat of the brush along that edge. So just to define where I'm painting to. And then just popping down some shapes. So keep it nice and simple. We don't want the focus really to be on on the branch. We want the focus definitely on our squirrel. So you don't want to cause too much attention, draw too much attention. Um, so keep it nice and simple. And obviously we've always already got this blue undertone um, of the background, which is which works really nicely. Um, it's lighter at the bottom we've got some light coming through so I want to leave some of that um, I shall let that dry and then come in with a different tone probably warm it up a bit maybe use some of my orange um, actually let's just go ahead and do that now so I've added some of my brown to the orange just to um, so it's not quite so bright and we can come in with some of those shapes just fill in some of those gaps um, with that kind of orangey tone that you can see um, which works out quite nicely and then we can build up the shadow underneath him as well um, so some of these shapes are coming to get blending together, which is good because, you know, we do, like I say, you want it to look natural. We don't want it to look patchy. Um, but this is a good way of, of getting that kind of that bark effect on the surface. So um, go ahead and carry on working on the um, underside of the squirrel there. Um, and I will do another, probably another coat, another layer of, of paint in the same way on the branch. And then um, I'll come back and show you what to do with the salt in the background and that will be our squirrel completed. Okay, so I um, went away and I did some more work on, as you can see, the branch at the bottom. I also looked again at my squirrel. I worked on this edge. As you can see, the hairs look much more sort of naturalistic now on his belly there and under his arms. Um, I cut into it a little bit with some blue of the sky. So I just took a 
small brush and flicked some blue back into the white areas that I'd left. Um, so now it looks more, much more sort of like hair. So that worked quite nicely. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but I actually did end up bringing some Payne's Grey, quite pale, but brought it into the body um, of the squirrel as well. And I think that works quite nicely. I used the Payne's Grey to do the shadow underneath his foot. Um, I did a second coat on his eye, which pulls that nicely into the foreground now. So he, it stands out lovely. He looks alive. He's got a couple of little highlights there. Um, and I think the, the direction of the hairs on the body work very nicely to create that three-dimensional shape. Um, so that's fab. Um, if you can see, my salt has worked really nicely in the background to create this kind of crystalline effect. Um, now all that's left to do is to tilt the board slightly and now it's fully dry in the background. You just use the pads of your fingers to gently just brush those off the surface. Um, what you don't want to do, obviously don't do this while your painting is still wet because you'll end up smudging what you've done. Um, but just work your way around the piece and just tap, sort of tap and rub gently. Shouldn't take much just to remove that salt from the surface. Um, and then you're left with that beautiful um, texture in the background that sort of re resembles snow um, and then let me give you a quick tip so let's get rid of that salt and a quick tip for today as well is that to remove your tape you want to do this carefully okay so the tape sometimes can tear the paper um, if you start in the top corner pick up the tape but then pull the tape, hold on to the paper and pull the tape away from your work like this. So you can see it's picked up a little bit of the surface paper there. If I was pulling this way into my work, it could tear my painting. So just um, be careful when you're removing the tape to, to do it in that way. Another tip is to, if you're really finding it difficult to remove the tape, um, use the hairdryer. You can warm the glue up by just a minute or so. Um, uh, use the hairdryer and it will be easy. Look, it's look tearing at my paper there. So if I was uh, not careful removing it, it could have damaged the edge that I've got there. Um, so let's just do this quickly and give you a recap of what we've done. That's the final strip there. Lovely. Excellent. We need the drawing board and let's see what we've got. So, yeah, we've got our lovely squirrel. Um, he's got quite a cheeky face. We've got some lovely orange tones across his tail there and coming through the warmth in his body. Um, and I think the overall um, composition works well. You know, this kind of angle of the branch is is bringing us into the painting nicely and then the swoop of his tail uh, lets us explore the painting really well. So um, if you've got any questions about this painting, guys, email me or send me a message on Facebook and I will try and answer those as quickly as I can. So I've got to edit this video now and send it all out to you this afternoon. It's now 20 past 12, <laughs> so it'll be some time in the next few hours that I get it over to you. But good luck with your paintings and I hope you enjoy this one. Take care, guys.